it's a fact that the city of Luxembourg is still growing. We have uh, over 64% of non Luxembourgers in the city. And what I, I, I don't, I shouldn't say that because I know that it's not that much popular to say it, but nowadays I, I've got the feeling that in Luxembourg we create always more parallel societies. For example, when I see that um, some scouts movement, the sports movement, are really organized just by citizenship. So that means that you have an English uh, group and you have a Portuguese group. This is something I don't like. I think if we start at the young age with children to separate them in activities, it's not good. We really, I, I'm, not in, I'm really not in favor of it. I think that we have especially to bring people like that and not people like that. The problem is nowadays in our school everything is in German, so we have the problems that especially afterwards, not now for children, but afterwards they go to the lycée, and if you see the figures, you see that in lycée classic you have most Luxembourgers, and in lycée technique you have the most foreigners. So, and the ones who are able to pay, they go, they send the children to Belgium or to France or to a private Luxembourgish French-speaking school. So I think that we really have to think about the situation of our schools in Luxembourg, especially to prepare them for their careers and their futures. The schools are in, in Luxembourg for the moment, really Luxembourg should be the um, long communes. So that means we should really insist that Luxembourgish language is important. It's an integration language. I know that it's not, we cannot ask everybody to be able to speak uh, Luxembourgish if he arrives in Luxembourg. But I think if you know that you will live in Luxembourg and you have a child, it's important to put him in Luxembourgish school. Because if you directly start to put your child in a Portuguese school or in a French school, this will be very difficult to integrate afterwards if he doesn't, is able to speak our language too. It's just the fact that we know exactly how we are. I, I'm sure you have the same situation when you are with Luxembourgish colleagues. When they, they will see you, they will say, oh yes, we will speak English for you. This will take five minutes and then they will switch again to Luxembourgish. They will switch again to Luxembourgish because it's easier for them. And then you are a bit excluded. And I'm sure if you are with, with, your, with your partner or, and, uh, or with your wife and you, you are together at a dinner, they will do it the five first minutes and then they will always try when they have a dinner to put you next to an English-speaking person because they know it will be easier for you. And I think really it's not a question of identity or nothing, but it's just a question of habits also for us. It's something that is very important. I think it's, um, it's a quality of our country to be able to speak so many different languages and this should be preserved. Um, but I really, I'm very happy now we have uh, over 800 persons who got a diploma that they took Luxembourgish classes. And what is important, it's for Luxembourgers, if they s hear someone speaking Luxembourgish, even with an accent just doing mistakes, not to make fun of it. We should be proud that people are interested in language which is just used in Luxembourg. Because I have to admit, Luxembourg won't be the language, the most useful language in the world, but I think in the country, yes. It's hard when you have to fight in politics with other politicians. But I don't mind when I see the results of the electors and I think the last elections proved that the electors are less conservative than other politicians. And I never made this, my sexuality as a, a topic to for politics, to people vote against or for. I think people voted for a program, they voted for persons, they voted for, for my character, they voted for, for, for a party, and they didn't look, uh, they, they were just happy to see that I'm happy too, because if you're happy at home, people can feel it that you are also doing your job well if you have people really with faces like that all the time. It's just sometimes it's not easy because you have some conservative uh, persons, but always less and less and less, and that makes me happy. First thing is, I would love to make it possible to have less cars in the city, but we just can do that if we really have a good alternative. If you take twice much time to take public transportation than with your car, you won't be able to ask people and to, to move them from the private car to the public transportation. It is impossible. For example, the tram. I think we shouldn't speak all the time about the tram, we should build it. But if the tram goes from the rail station to the city centre, it's totally useless, because we have all the bus doing that. If we want to have a tram, we should have a station. It should start in Cessange, Gasperich, Rovalt, Gare, uh, city centre, Kirchberg and Finde. And there you will be able, not that people will have a, a quick transportation through the city from one part to the other part, with train stations on these different parts where you will be able to have the cars and so people will prefer to bring the car if they come from Arlon they will go to the train to the train station in Cessange they will leave the car there and they will have a tram in and in five minutes they are in town they will prefer to have that instead of being in a traffic jam during 20 minutes
there are two things. People who live in Clausen, if they are unhappy with Mr. Helminger, they are unhappy with us because we took the decision too. So that means uh, no one voted, accepted for Paul and for all the others of the list. So that means if people are really upset, they didn't vote for all of, uh, of our list. I think we have to know that a city has to live too. But we have to find the right balance between having fun and having respect. And um, if I, I, I'm strict, for example, if you have six o'clock opening authorizations and you don't respect, you have noise and things like that, you will get three o'clock. And if you don't respect three o'clock, you will have one o'clock. You will have uh, one letter to inform you that we had a lot of complaints and that next time we will have to take a decision. We always ask that we want to have an audit, results of an uh, um, independent uh, opinion and there was a guy from Switzerland who came to Luxembourg, he did it and he proved that the situation was bad because the camera filming a street so the criminality went to the north street and uh, so I think I, I'm not in favour to having whole city on the cameras. So I prefer if we could have prevention and if we would have more presence of police in the city. I think this is something very important for the Ministry of Interior first, Internal Affairs, that he gives the real possibility for policemen too, because if they are blocked and they're not able to, to, to say to people, move or to do, do, do this or that. So, for example, I propose, and we'll have a debate with the Ministry of, uh, in charge of the police too, instead of having cameras in the park, I would like to have a mobile post of police with bicycles and with rollerblades in the park and that they have one fixed place in the park but they, where they circulate and where they are present. I think this will be much more useful than a camera. I said a camera never arrested anyone. You have two things in security. You have the objective and the subjective things. The objective things is the fact that you know that you are safe. And the subjective things is this unsafety feeling, and this is terrible. And for some people, this subjective feeling will disappear if they see just someone. Just to see a policeman makes some people self research and they will go back to the park. And I think we will have to do everything that people get back to public places and they don't say, I don't want to be there because it's dangerous.